Here I've got a nice elementary geometry problem. So we've got an equilateral triangle with side length four. Furthermore, we have some line segments emanating from the vertices of this equilateral triangle, which I've drawn in orange. They intersect in a way that we create another equilateral triangle that is inside of our larger equilateral triangle. And they intersect in a way so that all of these four sub-triangles have the same area. So the area of this green equilateral triangle in the middle is equal to the area of this red triangle and the area of this blue triangle and the area of the purple triangle. So we have four equal area triangles building up this other triangle. And our goal is to find x, where x is the length of this line segment from this vertex here to this vertex here. Okay, so let's see what we can do about this. First off, I want to calculate the area of the entire triangle. What I mean is the triangle that's built up by the four sub-triangles. Then I'll use that to get the area of this green sub-triangle. Okay, so let's do that. So notice that our whole big triangle is an equilateral triangle like we pointed out. So that means it have, has side length four. I'll cut the bottom side into two pieces of length two. And I'll do that so that I can calculate the height via the Pythagorean theorem. So let's call this H. And so since this is a right angle here, and we know it's an equilateral triangle, we know this is gonna bisect this line segment, we know that two squared, which is four plus h squared is equal to four squared, which is 16. That tells us that h squared is equal to 12, which means that h is equal to, let's see, two times the square root of three. We can factor that 12 into a four times three, take the square root of four. So using the one half base times height formula for the big triangle, we see that area of big triangle, so I'll just write it like that, will be equal to one half base, which is four, times height, which is two times the square root of three. Now doing some simplification, we see that that is four times the square root of three. But it follows that the area of the green triangle in the middle will be one quarter the area of the big triangle. So that's pretty obvious just by our discussion earlier. So that means the area of the green triangle is the square root of three. Okay, so now let's see if we can use that to find the side length of the green triangle. So I'll draw a green triangle here Let's say it has side length s. Well, then that means we can break this bit down here into s over two and s over two. Use the same trick where we drop a height like that and then calculate the area using the Pythagorean theorem first. So let's notice we know that h squared plus s squared over four is equal to s squared. So again, that's just by the Pythagorean theorem. That tells us that h squared is equal to three s squared over four, which means h is equal to the square root of three over two times s. But now using the standard formula for the area of the triangle for this, we see that this is one half base times height, which will be s times h which will be equal to the square root of three over four times s squared when all is said and done. That gives us a nice equation that's easily solvable for s. Just multiply four over here and divide the square root of three. We see that s squared is equal to four or s is equal to two. Okay, so that means that this side length right here is equal to two. Now let's fill in some of the other parts of our triangle that are kind of obvious given the symmetries that are involved. We know that the side lengths of all of these sides for this inner equilateral triangle will be two. And furthermore, all of these lengths are x, again by symmetry built into this picture. Furthermore, we know that angle of every angle in a right triangle is pi over three or 60 degrees. So that means I can write pi over three here, 
but that makes a straight line, which means what's left over is two pi over three. So next we wanna apply the law of cosines to this blue triangle. So let's see, that tells us that four squared, which is equal to 16, will be equal to x squared plus x plus two squared. So at this point, it looks like the Pythagorean theorem, but we need to do a correction because this angle right here is not a right angle. And so that correction involves subtracting two times x times x plus two times cosine of two pi over three. But then let's recall that cosine of two pi over three is negative one half. So that actually causes some simplification. Notice this minus sign will cancel with this minus sign. The two will cancel with the two. So in fact, that changing of signs and canceling the minus sign really just gets rid of the whole cosine of two pi over three part. Now we can start simplifying. So we have 16 equals x squared plus x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus another x squared plus 2x. Now let's get to simplifying this thing. So we've got x squared plus x squared plus x squared. So that is going to be 3x squared. And then we have 4x plus 2x, that's 6x. And then we can move this 16 over. We'll have 4 minus 16, that's negative 12 equals 0. Now we can factor a three out of that, and that leaves us with x squared plus two x minus four is equal to zero. And then we can use maybe the quadratic formula if you like, and I'll leave it to you guys to check that the solution we will get is x equals the square root of five minus one. We will in fact get a positive and a negative solution, but we clearly have to keep the positive solution for our setup. And that's a good place to stop.